Hey, uh, this is Richard again. Um, this is a sort of second episode of my local 44 history. Not just mine, but history that I'm involved in and aware of. And uh, I wanted to just share a couple of them. This is, the f I don't know if you saw the first video, but I'll link to it. And um, there were the two issues here that I want to co comment on. For those of you that put in meter boxes or, or, or that you, you know, when we do it, I mean, I was in the maintenance department and when we had to go out and fix uh, services and this, that and the other. Well, way back when I started, meter boxes were made of concrete. They were very heavy. Was, and a number six, you can imagine what a number six box weighed. And there was a big issue to get them replaced. We had negotiations with the bosses. We fought against contracting out. And we finally got um, the, uh, the uh, meter boxes. They're made now of some sort of fiberglass, I think. Oh, it was a total change. It was such a change in our life, but we had to go through an intense struggle to get them. The other issue I want to touch on and I got a lot of records on this of any young people that want to get involved in the union and want to talk to me and you should be involved in the union, it's all you got uh, um, was the truck drivers we had a big battle in the old days over the air seats there were no air seats in the trucks old Jay-Z Young and I think his son still works there he, could, he knew the only place you could still get a 10, 10 cent cup of coffee and Jay-Z Young was involved in that and got me to push it as I was a steward and uh, uh, there, there were no air seats and people think well people just drive trucks well there's lots of illnesses from t trucks uh, back and so forth structural illnesses just like people that sit in front of computers and the women in the white collar that do the computer work there's a side effect to all work so we had a big struggle over that and then we eventually got air seats and I just want to uh, uh, touch on this last thing there was this supervisor she's still alive so I don't want to mention any names but uh, she, she, People were terrified of her. Grown men were terrified of this person. She was immensely unpopular. And I'm talking about in the workplace. I didn't, personally, I'm not talking about anything yet. And so we had an, an, an ongoing battle with her. And uh, I remember a bunch of us went up to the GM's office. I think it was Gilbert. They, we didn't have an appointment, about five or six of us. I can't remember us all. It might have been Marvin, Roger, me, Jerry Alvarez, Cheryl might have been there. I can't remember. But we went up and we stormed on up there. And uh, we, we met with the GM and we, had a, we took, complained about this question and this person and we called it econo uh, workplace terrorism and so forth. Used the same uh, a, 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 a name for a janitor a supervisor who tried to sue me and take my house away because I said he was a, a workplace terrorist at uh, the board of directors. But so we went up there and I remember the general manager telling me and the others and if you, if you were there with me and you can fill it in that we don't tell, you don't tell us who we, where we put our staff. And so we wanted this person gone, to be honest. We never got this person gone, but we got her moved. And we had, how did we do it? We, apart from just constantly filing grievances and this, that and the other, which is a secondary way, the, be the most important way is to mobilize people. And what we use the union for, and this is, I've never been opposed to it, is un use the union to pay union business leave so that you can go around to the yard, you can go around to different workplaces, you can interact with your members, you can listen to them. The old, day, the old days when the steward would take the dues, that's better than dues check off, because the boss controls that. And you have an interaction, the steward gets the dues from the member, the member talks, complains, say we need this, we need that. And of course the union leadership, the hierarchy in the big unions and in the organised labour in general, they don't want that, they don't want to hear from the membership. They all talk about come to the membership meeting as long as you don't oppose them. So we organised, we went to the Central Labour Council, we called people in their homes, we got about 150, 200 people down at a rally to get this person out. And we never got a, this person removed, but we, we did get her moved. Uh, the thing is, others didn't follow it up. They even got a psychiatrist or some psychotherapist or something to come in check stiff up stuff out. But we managed to do that, and that's what it really takes. And it builds the union's presence when you call people at home and stuff like that. We use our union business leave money, and we and we interacted with our members, and it was a very very powerful thing. And I remember one time at the board, we had about 150 there, I think. And uh, there was a guy, we normally spoke of the leaders at the board, but we, I remember a guy coming up, he was a concrete repairman, Tom. Tom Howie, interesting character, big guy, former Marine, and he'd never spoken before. And he comes to me standing at the back and he says, Rich, I don't know what to say. I said, Tom, just speak from the heart, mate. 
just say what you feel. And he goes up there and he says, he says that, you know, I'm an ex-Marine. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps, I'm a concrete repairer, I've been in the building trades, blah, blah, blah. He's a big fella, over six foot. And he says, I'm not afraid of many things in this world, but I'm afraid of that, her. He said, I'm afraid of her. And, and that was more powerful than any of us leaders going up there and speaking. But that was a tremendous mobilization we had, and it, it failed in the long run because of, for other reasons. But I wanted to touch on that. Um, yeah, and I'm always up for talking to somebody, uh, younger people, about the union. But but the the main thing is, don't, don't you got to get involved in it. I know it's hard. It takes money away. It takes time away from family and everything else. But it's it's all you got there. And we work in the public sector, so our conditions are better and it's more humane. But the union is what will, and you need to unite both those locals at East Bay Mud, white collar and blue collar. You need to unite them. All right. So that's my little speech for today.